It's something you can do forever. There's always something more to learn. Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming by. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 342. Today, I'm joined by Sensei Amanda Cass. If you don't know my voice, you might want to head on over to whistlekick.com and see everything that I've been putting my heart and soul into over the last few years. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host for the show. I'm the founder at Whistlekick, and I'm a traditional martial artist, and I love the martial arts. We've got a great newsletter. You can check that out. We only drop one, maybe two issues a month, just letting you know what's going on behind the scenes as we roll out new products, maybe drop some new projects, or otherwise just have stuff to tell you about. Sometimes it's a discount. Sometimes it's a special event. There's all kinds of cool stuff that we're doing here, and you want to know about it. So find out at Whistlekick or WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com. Promise, not going to spam you. Let's talk about today's guest. As you might imagine, I use social media, and I follow a lot of martial artists on social media. And that's how I found today's guest. Today's guest, Sensei Amanda Cass, has been building quite a following on Instagram. Now, there are a lot of people who post things on social media, and maybe they build a following, but I don't want to follow them. I might keep tabs on what they're doing, but they don't speak to the traditional martial arts the way that, I'll be honest, I think it should be spoken to. And today's guest does. So I reached out to her. I said, hey, let's have you on the show. Let's talk about your journey. And I was lucky enough that she said yes. So here we are. Let's listen to my conversation with Sensei Amanda Cass. Sensei Cass, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Hey, happy to be here, Jeremy. I'm happy to have you here. And I'll admit, I didn't realize you were so close when we set all this up. I, yeah, I, no, I should have known by the area code when you submitted the guest form. I should have known by the area code, but it didn't, it didn't click. Yeah, I remember you, you asking me, oh, oh, you're on the East Coast. Uh, whereabouts? I'm like, oh, Boston. You're not far at all. New England. Oh, and now making me feel bad because I don't even remember our emails. <laughs> making me look bad on I my own. I remember everything. Show. Oh, point to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for doing this. As we already mentioned, it's a it's a rainy day here, and there have been a, a a few bouts of heavy rain. So, audience, you you might hear the sound of the rain on the metal roof as we get going, but hopefully not too yeah. bad. Got rain down here too, so yeah, yeah. Well, not as bad as it is down south. So that's true. Thank, we're we're lucky. We are. We are. But of course, we could talk weather all day. We could talk New England. We could talk Boston. We could talk about the uniqueness of the Southie accent and how much we I could. love it <laughs> and how much it makes me think of watching The Departed, which oh. now after we, we are done talking, I will probably watch that while I have dinner. But we are actually here to talk about martial arts. Absolutely. And we're here to talk about you and your martial arts journey. So let's roll back. Let's hit reset on the counter. How did you find martial arts? Well, I found it at a pretty young age. Um, I started doing martial arts in 1997 when I was eight. And the reason I got into it was actually um, my mom used to do martial arts and she wanted to also get back into it. So it was kind of a family endeavor, which eventually turned into me doing martial arts. My daughter does martial arts now. So pretty much come from a background of martial artists. And so what was the reason your mom got into it? Um, I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I know it was, she's into fitness and everything too. And it is just a great outlet and a funner way to work out than just going to the gym, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, because you are so close and I know so many of the folks that train in New England, can I ask where you, where you started or at least what style? Uh, Shaolin Kempo Karate. Okay. Originally started with East Coast Martial Arts, but we're now Dynamic Martial Arts. Okay. All right. And what has, what's kept you in it? Because if I'm, if I'm doing the math, you know, we're, we're talking 20 years. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I really think that, number one, I always say to people, I'm like, just kick it and punch it. It never gets old for me. I just always love to do it. Um, 
But besides that, I think that it is a fun way to work out, but it's also not just my fitness regimen. It's kind of like, you know, one of those things that just keeps you sane, you know, when you're working out and we have a really great community of people that I'm around. So it's not just doing martial arts. It's the people that I'm around. And I've had people, you know, that have helped me throughout my life because I've been in it so long, you know? Mm. One of the things that people will often hold up as a, an asset to being a martial artist is that community, that family that you just mentioned. Yeah, exactly. Any thoughts on what creates that? Because I'll be, I'll be honest, we've had folks on the show who have not talked about that. And I've been part of and, and seen plenty of schools where that doesn't happen so much. That class is over and people just leave and they don't talk to each other very much. And I don't have any good explanation as to why one and not the other. Maybe you have some thoughts. Um, I would have to say it's probably the head instructor that kind of facilitates that sense of community between their students. Um, because we do have like a close knit group of people. I mean, my sensei has been like, you know, an aunt or just somebody that I've always been able to come to pretty much my whole life. Cause you know, she's known me since I was eight. And then beyond that, you know, I teach martial arts at her school. So I think that sense of community just got built very early on is a pretty much a friendship, you know? Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. You have a female instructor and I don't want to put a negative connotation in, in making that statement, but unfortunately, statistically, that is not the norm. That is not the norm. You're correct. I mean, I feel like um, growing up, I've always been interested in like male dominated activities like sports anyways, like martial arts and uh, started to get into the stunt community a bit. And it is generally a male dominated industry. Um, I'm lucky that I have her and she's a super strong woman. So I'm going to guess your mother might also be similar. Yes, she is. My mom, uh, she's been doing martial arts just as long as I have now. And she had that history of doing it before and wanting to get back into it in the 90s. And she was a military woman. So she's a very strong woman as well. So I'm lucky to have these strong female influences. Do you ever find that there's a... I don't want to use the word conflict because that has a negative connotation. Do you ever find a challenge with you being so willing to embrace your participation in what, what you've called a male dominated space with other women who maybe are less comfortable with that? Um, I don't think so. I feel like a lot of the women that I have met that are into this are also strong women. Uh, I feel like I haven't noticed uh, any issues with it generally. I mean, especially not at our school. Yeah. Yeah. So much of what you're talking about really comes from the top. It comes from that head instructor and, and the culture. And you know, as you're talking about the community and that coming from the instructor, that makes a lot of sense to me. And it would make sense that so much of the rest of the way people conduct themselves. And I would expect who is attracted into the school. Yeah, I definitely think that whoever's attracted in is, I mean, you you fit in with this group of people and I'm, people are attracted to people with similar ideals and passions and where they want to go in life, you know? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, what has kept you in martial arts? I mean, tw 20 years and, and you know, you kind of, you, you hinted at this, but it's such a big subject it's such a big deal that i don't i don't want to gloss over it, it you know it you is. started as a kid and you started yeah. i think we could probably say not so much at your own idea you know it was, it was your mother's idea it was to get you in yeah but somewhere along the way that changed because you're still going you're clearly an adult yep and now you're doing more than you have to because you're teaching mm -hmm. absolutely uh i would say one thing about martial arts that I always do say to people is it's something you can do forever. There's always something more to learn. It doesn't matter if you've been doing it for five, 10, 20, 30 years, there's always a new avenue you can explore because not only is there one style of martial arts, and even if you do do one style, it takes so many years to learn the fundamentals behind that style, but there's so many new ways to discover martial arts again. 
whether it's competing and getting the feel for tournaments or um, doing live sh shows where people learn fight choreography or film. Uh, there's so many ways to be a martial artist and enjoy doing what you do. Fully agree. One of my favorite things about the martial arts is that there are a lot of ways to participate and do things that work for you. It can be competition. It can be hyper traditional training in a class. It can be tricking. It can be stunt work. It can be more. I mean, I'm, absolutely. You could keep going on and on. Yeah, the list is endless. We could talk all day about the list, and the, that's what's awesome about it, you know. Now, for you, if you were to order that list, what would your top few things? B, you mentioned you're starting to get into stunts, but what else really resonates for you? Uh, well, I really, growing up, I was really into the demonstration teams. Um, I liked going out and performing for people. Um, that sense of pride or people coming up after you performed something and they really enjoyed it or you inspired them. I'd say that's high on the list, which is one of the reasons that I always was interested in stunt work. I mean, I used to not know how to enter that business, but I've kind of started to discover how to, um, that's big on it. Also teaching. I've been teaching for so long now that I've seen kids go from, you know, five-year-old white belts to 15 year olds that are getting ready to go for their black belt. And it's interesting to watch, um, all the kids grow up in our school. So I really enjoy that as well. Nice. nice. Mm -hmm. I think that gives us a pretty good foundation so we can wander forward, learn more about you. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the next question on the list, my favorite one, the one that I would ask first if I could, is about stories. And it's about your stories, your journey through the martial arts. So if I were to ask you to boil everything down to your favorite martial arts story from your time, what would that be? Hmm, that's a great question. I feel like I have several, but I'm gonna probably go with. Uh, I got my fourth degree black belt three years, uh, three years ago, and um, the test was two days long. Uh, my wow, yeah, it was super intense. So uh, the second day, we had to wake up at like three in the morning and go to the beach because we were gonna do a portion of the test there and. Once the sun started to come up, that is when we got our next rank. And I'm not generally like a person that'll cry over stuff, but this was like one of the first times that I felt like really emotional because it was kind of a culmination because at that time I had been studying 18 years and I was like, wow, that's more than half my life that I've been doing this and dedicating like my time to this. So I would say that's probably definitely one of my favorite stories because my mom also got her fourth degree that day as well. So mm -hmm. it was, it was a big day for everybody. And I was, I was like holding back tears. I'm like, Oh, this isn't me. Like, why am I acting like this? But it was, it was awesome. Nice. Mm -hmm. How much more? No, I'm, I'm, I'm speculating here. I'm going to just ask directly. Does it mean more to you participating with family? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. My daughter is now, uh, she got her green belt with brown stripe and she's 10 and, uh, she is pretty much obsessed with it. Like she doesn't want to miss class ever. We were on vacation last month and, uh, she had to miss a class. She's like, well, I don't really, I don't know. I don't want to miss a class. I'm not, I'm like, it's okay to take a break. <laughs> so there's three generations of you in there. Yep. Do you teach her? I do. Yes. Uh, well, my teacher teaches her as well. I also okay. teach her um, when I run classes. Is that difficult? No. Uh, initially, when she was little, paying attention was super hard for her. But now she's so into it that she just wants to progress. And she's like hyper-focused when she does it now. It's great. It's fun to watch. It can be hard in some schools. And to be frank, I'm speaking from personal experience, participating in martial arts with family especially when there is a power difference, a, a rank difference, I guess. Yeah. Is the best way to put it. You know, is there ever a challenge with your mother where, you know, she's your mother, she's always your mother, but you're the same rank. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. Um, I don't think so. Um, 
I think that we're both, we both kind of know where we stand. And I always say like everybody has their strengths and their weaknesses within their martial arts. So um, that's something I, I always like pay attention to. Like if I'm really good at something and somebody's not, or if I struggle with something and someone else is better at it, you know, you kind of swallow your pride and you're like, all right, I'll take the help. You know, you don't need to, just cause you're the same rank, you don't need to feel like you should be equivalent in every aspect of what you're doing. Mm. Now there is a topic that gets some people riled up. The idea of what a certain rank means that when someone reaches whatever, whatever rank, whatever belt that there should be certain standards. And I think we all agree that there are standards, but how those standards are implemented, especially when you have dramatically different people. Yes. Training in martial arts. Oh yeah, absolutely. Now, I don't know if you have say over promotion or, or, or even any influence in promotion at your school, but is that something that you've thought about? Is that something you have a, a, an opinion on? I do have say over promotion in our school. I do help with um, tests quite frequently, depending on um, our black belt tests don't happen as often as our underbelt tests do, but I do help with uh, testing. And I think, you know, with martial arts, you're going to have the phenoms who can kick and punch incredibly. And then you're going to have people who you maybe struggle in that department. And I think that a big part of it is showing up and making sure you're, you're coming to training and putting your best foot forward in order to progress and go through the ranks in martial arts. You know, I don't, it doesn't help for anybody to be lazy when they're, they're trying to move up through the ranks or gain a skill or knowledge on what they're doing. Mm. Makes lots of sense. Yeah. Now, other than martial arts, you know, and it, it's clear that that is a big chunk of who you are and Absolutely. the hours in your day. What else is going on in your life? What else do you do? Any other hobbies or? Yeah, passion? I'm super into physical fitness as well as martial arts. Um, one of the things that I enjoy doing is I, for a little while, I was getting into like obstacle training and stuff. Mm. Um, I've kind of calmed down with that because the focus is is stunts and trying to break into that industry. So a lot of the stuff I've been doing now, besides the martial arts, I've uh, recently gotten into parkour, which I really enjoy because growing up, not only did I do martial arts, I did gymnastics as well. So I feel like between the martial arts and the gymnastics background, like I, th- I find parkour to be really fun. Uh, Cause going to the gym and stuff and just lifting weights is great. If like, you're in a time crunch or you want to throw your headphones on and kind of zone out. But in order to like gain more body control or really learn how your body can move, I find that sports that involve total movement of everything at the same time uh, to be a lot of fun. Completely agree. I did a few years of parkour and it's amazing how cross training in these different disciplines, weight training, martial arts, parkour, gymnastics. I mean, you're, you're checking my four boxes as well, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. At a certain level, it's all the same stuff. Yeah. It's how your body moves. Exactly. It's the art of movement. Mm, Yes. Yes. (laughs) All right. Cool. Martial artists have a unique tool set when it comes to dealing with challenges. Could be physical challenges. Could be non-physical challenges. Mm -hmm. Tell us about a difficult time in your life and how you were able to reflect on or use your martial arts to move through it. Uh, All right. So I was a young mom. Uh, I had my daughter when I was 19. Um, So I would say getting through college and being a young mom was definitely difficult. That was probably one of the hardest things I had to overcome because I've never been a fan of sitting down in a classroom and writing papers. You know, I'm such an active person that that's what I enjoy doing a lot more, but i saw the value in education. And I was like, well, I want to get my degree still. So I I managed to work through it and get a bachelor's degree from UMass Boston. Um, I would say that what helped me with martial arts, number one, my martial arts family did help me. You know, Uh, my teacher was there for me all the time. She's like, oh, I'll watch Adriana if, you know, 
if you have a class, so that number one, that was a big part of getting through, you know, teamwork makes the dream work. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely having patience, uh, martial arts, especially teaching martial arts teaches you a lot of patience. There's nothing like teaching a form to a five-year-old that doesn't, you know, that does not teach you patience. So, um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> the patience and, and the determination, like the mind over matter aspect of things, whether it's, you know, getting through a class or getting through something physical. Um, I feel like the mind over matter aspect that a lot of martial artists have definitely helped me in that time. Right on, mm-hmm. right on. And if you could go back and talk to your 19 year old self, what advice would you give her? Um, I'd probably tell her number one, everything's going to work out. It seems like completely crazy time of your life, but, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason and you'll slowly start to figure out where your place in the world is, you know? I'm sure that if we were to make a list of the people who were really influential on you as a martial artist, I'm guessing there are two that are going to pop to the list. Your head instructor. Yep. I'm going to guess your mother. Yep. And I'm, I'm happy for you to talk about those two, but I want you to put a third name on the list. Who, right. who would be number three on the list of individuals who have been most influential on well, you? I'm going to say you, I think you already interviewed him, Bill Superfoot Wallace. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I read it on the thing. I was like, oh, he knows him. It's cool. Um, one of the things I love about watching him is like his flexibility is insane and his leg control. And he's a lefty, which is crazy. Um, I, I'm, I've always been really flexible. So I've always looked for like, you know, stretching videos and ways to improve even more upon my flexibility. Cause sometimes when you're really flexible, the average stretches, you're like, eh, I'm just kind of sitting here, you know? And I remember coming across one of his videos years ago and it was a stretching video. And I was like, wow, this guy is, and at the time he was in his fifties and I hope to, you know, keep that level of fitness all the way up through my life. So I was definitely inspired by that. And the videos helped a lot too. Like some of the split things that he does are pretty impressive. For sure. Yeah, undoubtedly. Okay. And now, because I I gave you the option, you know, tell us a little bit about how your instructor and your mother have guided you, formed you as the martial artist you are today. Well, I would definitely say my instructor, um, was always like pretty creative growing up. So things didn't really get old or stale. Um, I enjoyed, yeah, I was like a teenager. I was captain of the demo team and she kind of let me head that, which I felt a sense of pride being able to run the demo team at a young age. Um, my mom, uh, obviously she signed me up. Uh, she's taught me a lot about, you know, hard work and dedicating your time to it. I remember growing up and, uh, if I'd be tired someday, she's like, no, nope, you should still go. And I was like, all right, I'll go, go to karate. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And now let's flip that question on its head. If you could train with someone that you haven't anywhere in the world, and let's say anywhere in time, you've found a time machine, so you can go back if you want. Mm-hmm. Who would you want to train with? Um, I would have to go with Jackie Chan. Mm. Boy, that I'm- would be amazing. <laughs> Growing up watching his movies, and I was just always super inspired by him. And when I was younger, I was always like, man, I would love to fight on film. I would it'd be so cool. But at the time, I was like... I I don't have a rocket ship to go to the moon. That's crazy. How am I going to be able to do that? (laughs) You know? (laughs) And uh, slowly I've started to meet people over the last two years or so. And I'm like, wait, maybe I can do this. But if I had an option to call him up on the phone, I would certainly be like, hey, Jackie, let's go train. (laughs) So cool. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites. Yeah, he's so awesome. And his, his stunt team, I've watched, it's an old movie and it's about how 
him and his stunt team work together to create, you know, action sequences and stuff. And I can't, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think it's like called My Stunts or something like that. And it just goes pretty much through a good majority of his career talking about his stunt team and him and the stunts that he's completed and the sacrifices he's made on his body to get this stuff out on film. And it's amazing what his, how his stunt team and him work together. Um, he's got like sound cues so that they know when to swing at him if they're behind him. And yeah, it's so awesome. One of, one of my faves for sure. Mm. What's your favorite Jackie Chan movie? Oh man. Hmm. I, I love the rush hour movies. Yeah. <laughs> You know, the comedy in it is hysterical. I would definitely say that's, um, as far as stunts go, you know, some of his older stuff from Hong Kong and everything is also really good. Yeah. Yeah. La- last I looked, uh, and assuming that you consider Rush Hour, you know, the Rush Hour films to be martial arts movies, they are the top grossing martial arts movies of all time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kind of laying that out there with a, without a lot of judgment because I'm not sure how I feel about that. Oh, oh, because they're the highest grossing? Well, they're they're fun and I enjoy they are. them. And I feel like people like comedy, you know? Yeah. As far as like stunts go, though, like Police Story, you know, when he jumped mm-hmm. off that, uh, like, I don't know, it was like third story and then maybe at like a mall or something and or when he jumped off of, uh, I think it was like a moving bus into a window. Like that's, that's the crazy stuff that's, that he's really done. But I do enjoy comedy a lot. I love to laugh. So He is a funny man and, and a singer as well. I mean, talk about multi-talented. Yeah, he's a triple threat there. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned earlier that you'd spent some time with demo teams. So I'm going to guess that you were also competing somewhere along the way. Yeah, I did compete um, back in my younger days. Uh, I want to say the most competing I did was maybe around 2005, 2006. I did quite a bit of tournaments back then. Um, our school doesn't is it doesn't force anybody to do a million tournaments. I know there's some schools out there that are like strictly tournament based, and that's great. Um, but we don't always make people do that all the time. We do make people compete. But at the time, I kind of got interested in that through a friend who was starting to go to some more tournaments. Um, I did the Quebec Open. I did the Twin Tower Classic, the U.S. Open. I did a whole bunch of stuff that year because I just wanted to get that exposure and uh, be put out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand that. And what did you learn from your time in competition? Um, That's a good question. I mean, I think mainly like what I was saying, being put out of your comfort zone is always good. Uh, It definitely teaches you stuff for the future because the only way to grow is to be, you know, put out of your comfort zone. I mean, I really enjoyed uh, traditional forms and sparring. Um, And one thing about sparring that I always found interesting, which... Whenever I would go up to spar versus forms, forms, you know what to expect. You're going to go in front of the judges. You're going to do this thing you've already created. But with uh, sparring, especially putting you out of your comfort zone, you never know who you're going to be going up against at any tournament, you know, and I'm short, I'm small, I'm five foot one. So it was always interesting to compete against some tall people for sure. Let's talk about the future. Mm-hmm. Something tells me that you're someone who spends a lot of time considering what's what's going to go on in the next few years, maybe even a few decades. You're you're a mom, and there's something that I know of moms. They tend to spend a lot of time thinking about the future. Yes, I do. I do spend a lot of time thinking about my future, my daughter's future. Uh, for me, um, one of the things that I do for work outside of the stunts and the martial arts and stuff is uh, I work with kids who have autism. I do in-home therapies, um, which I love, and I am thankful to work with some awesome families. But for me, I know that the future is definitely in building my social media platform as well as my stunt career. That's really where I want to take things because... The, like I told you before, the stunt thing was a, initially started as a dream. Me saying, wow, how cool would that be as a kid growing up pretty much my whole life? And now that it's slowly starting to take shape, it takes a lot of work, 
you know, a lot of networking, meeting people, being friends with the people who are already doing it. One of the things I've always said in my life is the only way to do something you really want to do is to find the people already doing it and join that community. And luckily enough, I've been able to slowly start meeting the people doing what I want to do. So I'm hoping that that shapes up into, you know, a great career for me because I always have done martial arts my whole life, as we talked about, you know, 20 over 20 years now. And I kind of explained the story to somebody. I was like, man, I, it's like, I didn't know what I wanted to do in my early twenties or my mid twenties initially, but it's almost like I always knew I, I always knew it would be martial arts. I just didn't know how it would be martial arts. So the fact that things are starting to shape up and I can take that road to do what I love is definitely what I want to be doing. Nice. So now if it's going to be stunts, you know, if that, if if, I'm hearing you right, right. That's, that's where you're hoping to take it. Yes. Stunts Mm -hmm. and the whole social media, figuring that whole thing out. I've just got to 10 K on Instagram. So I'm hoping to still build that up as well. If you, I'm sure if I asked who would you want to work with movie wise, you're going to say Jackie Chan, right? I mean, that's, he's going to be top on the list. That, that's one, but... Okay. Uh, who else is up there for you? Who else is up there? 8711 Action Design is certainly up there too. <laughs> they're, they're an amazing stunt team and they do a lot of the big films now. So that would definitely be somewhere. Hopefully I can have... I went out to California last March to do some training and I took some training sessions under different people and I went out to Atlanta within a couple weeks span to train with some people. But... I hope definitely next time I get out to California, I can go take at least a class at 8711 action. I mean, I know getting in with them is hard, but that would be amazing. Awesome. And for folks that may not know that crew, Mm -hmm. including me, what movies, you know, can you, can you throw out a, a movie or two people may have seen that they've worked on? Um, let me see. I'm trying to think of one of the latest things that they have done that everyone would know. They did John Wick. Um, and I think everyone John, Yeah, knows. John Wick. I mean, John Wick is one of those movies that keeps popping up and kind of bending the genre because it, it's it is so not traditionally a martial arts movie, but it's hard to argue that it isn't a martial arts movie. Yeah. There's so much martial arts, you know, happening in it. And I know that I believe even the actors in that movie had to learn quite a bit of martial arts while they were filming. Yes. Yeah. I've, I've read a number of things saying that Keanu Reeves has put a ton of time. Into yeah. I've heard that too. Yeah. I've heard he's arts. a really hard worker and uh, he, he puts his heart and soul into learning choreography and stuff when they are filming. Yeah. 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 And, and if you're a fan of violent, some would say realistic action scenes, then you would enjoy the John Wick films. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> They're um, brutal. They are. They are pretty awesome choreography in those films. Yeah. I definitely watch movies a little differently now, like starting to get into the stunt work and stuff. I'm like, huh. All right. I, I watch that a little different than I used to. <laughs> Do you ever see stuff on screen that that you say oh there's no way i'm going to be able to do that that scares the pants off me um well one thing i have not been able to experience yet is uh fire stuff and i think that's definitely a area where i'm kind of like hmm because i know that when people get lit on fire they do it in progressions they'll start with a finger burn then an arm burn then half your back but eventually when you are let on fire from what I've heard from people, you can't breathe, but you still have to act on your face. Like you would see in a film, someone maybe looking scared when they're on fire or screaming, you still have to have that action, but you can't breathe while you're moving around and doing it. So, and if you do, you can like injure your lungs. So I definitely say that's, that's something I'm kind of like, huh, <laughs> <laughs> that should be interesting when I do that. I'll still do it, but it's definitely one of those things where I'm like, mm, that's, that's going to take some getting used to. <laughs> there's a lot more that goes into making these action scenes, these fight scenes that people just, they don't get. Yeah. There's we watch a lot. It, 
we watch it as martial artists, especially, and we critique and say, oh, you know, that doesn't work and this and and that's not practical and and yada yada. And yet, yeah, people just for they don't know. Right. No, they don't. And even me, for me, I didn't know initially everything that goes into it. You know, you have a lot of martial artists that do end up, you know, getting into this business because you have the background and it's a great background to have for action fighting once you start to really get into it. But you don't realize even just the way the camera's facing, you know, that's a huge aspect of how you're going to fight. And you have to take all that into consideration. Absolutely. What was the biggest surprise as you started getting into stunts versus what you thought it was going to be? Um, hmm, biggest surprise. Definitely, maybe, hmm, thinking about this one for a second. Hmm. I mean, it is hard work. It is definitely, uh, you know, most people will say you got to build the friendships in the business to, to make it in it, you know, and I would definitely say like the biggest surprise is probably how much you have to network, you know, a lot of some people who are into the acting field are like, Oh, didn't you just get like an agent? And it's like, Nope, you have to put in all the work to meet the right people who are coordinating shows to, uh, get into it. So I would definitely say that. If you could have been in any one movie, if you could have done stunts in any one movie that you've seen, which one would it be? It's a good question. Mm. It's my job. It's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> You're good at making a question. It's my job. I got to <laughs> ask good questions. You do. Hmm. Gosh. Oh. I feel like I would take the question a little different, like, oh, man. Go for it. Spin it if you need to. Yeah, I feel like I would spin it, and it would be more based off of what kind of stunts are in the film, you know? Is it fighting or is it wire work? Because the two things that I enjoy most are obviously the fighting. I honestly don't mind hitting the ground, too, and uh, I do like wire work. So I feel like it would be based off of, like, maybe what the stunt is versus what... um, what movie it would be because you never you never know what you're going to do you know it could be something simple it could some, be something very complex um what's the most impressive stunt you've done you know if like we we lined up a highlight reel for you which actually i think you have i think you have a stunt reel don't you i do it's on my instagram i have my stunt reel there okay. um i would say through training and stuff uh i'm still like i said just working my way in getting into it i I do have a couple of test fights on my Instagram that I enjoy. Um, I would say through training though, uh, one of the thing, one of the other things that definitely I would say is the wire work. Nice. Yeah. Fun I, stuff I, and certainly it, leverages it your, works your gymnastics background too. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, when I was in California, I got the opportunity to do some wire work training out there and it definitely utilized my gymnastics background because of the type of wire work that we were doing. We had a couple of pick points on our hips and we were working some flips in there and stuff, which is a lot of fun. Cool. Now you mentioned Instagram. We've, we've talked about your social media. So if folks are listening and they want to find you online. Yeah. They, um, they, you guys can find me on uh, mainly utilize my Instagram platform. I'm hoping to start some YouTube stuff soon. But my Instagram platform name is Kick It Like Cass, which is Cass, my last name. And that's where they can find me there. Okay, awesome. And of course, as always, if somebody's new or maybe you just had an aneurysm, we will put everything that we've talked about today, including those links in the show notes, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. No need to try to scribble something in pen on your arm while you're on the treadmill or Right. <laughs> crash into a telephone pole while you're yep. awesome that'd be safe awesome this has been a lot of fun and i'm gonna ask you for one more thing as i kind of send you out the door what advice would you offer to the people listening today well if you guys are well into your martial arts career or if you're you know just starting out stick with it it's always a lot of fun i would definitely say 
you know, find a way to keep martial arts new and fresh in your life. And that's the way you truly enjoy it throughout your whole life. What a fun conversation. You know, I, I can only imagine being so blessed as to share martial arts with both my mother and my child. I mean, so lucky to be able to share the thing that you love so much with the people that you love the most. I want to thank you for coming on the show today, Sensei Cass. I do hope that we'll bump into each other at some point soon. We're not that far away. Let's make it happen. If you want to head on over to the show notes, you can do so at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. See some photos, some links, other good stuff that we've got going on to add context to this episode, as well as all of our other episodes. If you want to follow us on social media, we are at Whistlekick, and you can email me directly, jeremy at whistlekick.com. That's all I've got for you today. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.